Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining us once again for the Discipline Therapy Podcast. We have a special edition, special guest speaker, Mr. Rob Rodriguez, Hi, along with your two hosts, Suhei Sotomayor, and with me as always, Mr. EL Discipline in the building. Mm-hmm. Very excited today. You guys have hot names. I don't have any hot names. <laughs> Rob Rodriguez, that is so catchy. <laughs> R R and R. It's not as sexy as your guys. R and R. Say your name again. Suhei Sotomayor. Uh, I can say yours better. Look, Roberto Rodriguez. Ah, uh, see, that just makes me sound like one of those Spanish newscasters. <laughs> I'm about to tell you the weather in Spanish. Okay. Está frío. <laughs> Mister Yell Discipline. Yes. Yes. Are you not gonna do your thing? Your thing thing? Oh, so you're See? done with the intro? Oh, well, that was a nice you know, intro. listen. You done? Yeah, I'm pretty good. <laughs> you you, you got to take the whole thing. I did. No, I did it the first All time. All right. Ago. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> since you are addicts, we are giving you a dose of discipline therapy where everything is completely free. See, if you subscribe, it's gonna be right here, right here, right here. It's free. It's no monthly fee. It's judgment free, sucker free, sensor free, sensitive free, and plenty of liberty. God and the ancient ancestors are great, and that means everything else is straight. So go grab your wine or popcorn or roll a blunt if you have to, but the main thing is make sure the kids are in bed because we can be vulgar. Well done. We can well done. Prepare your mind to be fed because we have these soulful conversations. So prepare your mind to be fed. Light one up, inhale life and exhale strife. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, you are tuned in to the Discipline Therapy Podcast. We're here. here. Rob, we you always have get in on that. that I, I just yeah. enjoy listening. <laughs> we always get that one right. That was nice. That one. <laughs> it's him because he has that smooth voice. All right, I ladies and like gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> without further ado, we have a special guest, personal friend of mine. He's like family, uh, Mr. Rob Rodriguez, aka Mr. Best of the Best. Oh. I mean, if you see these awards, listen, listen, he's laughing right now because he's trying to be modest. If you see these awards behind us, that's him. He's even trying to look like, you know what I'm saying? Him. Like, that's all him. His voice. You know? <laughs> wow. Yes. That was more credit than I felt like I deserved. That was, that was so for, first and foremost, before we get into the actual questions, because I have a plethora of questions for you. Please, we want ask to. Away. We want to um, ask you, because we always ask um, our guests, how did they cope during the COVID, the, the pandemic? What have you learned? Uh, what have you learned? Um, did you benefit from it? Did it hurt you anyway? Um, go ahead. You have the floor. Um, I was fortunate enough that I didn't lose anyone during the pandemic. Uh, so mm-hmm. Let me just start off by saying uh, my heart goes out to anyone who lost uh, family, who lost uh, work, who, anyone who was affected by uh, the pandemic. Um, you know, God bless you. And, uh, you know, here's hopes that, you know, everything goes better for you guys in the future. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was fortunate enough that uh, nothing serious happened. Um but I always find try to find the good in uh, even the worst of times. Mm-hmm. Uh, my son, actually, my first son, uh, was born on February 18th. Yep, he's already Yay. answering our questions. That's what's up. <laughs> uh, and uh, four months later, no, I'm sorry, four weeks, I'm sorry, later, uh, the pandemic struck. Mm. The whole world shut down. And uh, I, I can say the one good thing, very good thing, uh, was that for the next three, four months, uh, my girlfriend and I were at home right so quarantine. he yeah so we were quarantined to the house um and my son was able to benefit from that because he had both his parents with that him so every awesome. day yeah. for the first three months of his life That's we learned good. to be a family um he learned very quickly how to sleep through the night we, oh that is so awesome one one very difficult thing about being a parent is uh being thrust into routine. That, he, he answered my question again. I know. I was going to ask, ask him, like, how, how is fatherhood? Have you, what have you yeah. learned? Like, are there positives, negatives? Because I, don't, I, I still how don't have children yet. You? I still don't have children yet. So I'm, like, trying to pick your brain. It, it, it is. Having um, a child being a father, I don't know about anyone else. But for me, it was the, um, the B, C, and A, D of, you know, my life. There was who I was and what I was doing. Uh, before I became a father, mm-hmm. and now there's everything that I need to do 
now that I am a father. Because you are a father. Yeah. yeah. And um, it does change you uh, for the better. And uh, again, I can only say this for myself because um, you know, being, you know, fatherhood, motherhood uh, is different for everyone. But for mm-hmm. myself personally, um, I have a different perspective on just life and people and, you know, the things that you thought matter mm-hmm. didn't matter as much. And the things that you never even thought, thought of is now one of the most important things in the world. Um, and uh, in that aspect, there are definitely positives and negatives. But because COVID kind of thrusts us into parenthood and um, routine, that's mm-hmm. really you know, the most important thing about you know parenting at first. We were fortunate enough that we were able to be thrust into routine without the distractions of the outside world. Yeah. There was no people hitting us up. Hey, are you coming over here? Mm-hmm. Hey, are you doing this? Um, work was put right. on back burners. Um, right, so you clients. could feed him and not have to worry about waking up early to go to work. I didn't have to worry about anything Any that. except for taking care of my girlfriend because she just had a child. So, you know, guys, make sure that's you remember another, that. That's the question. Were you, the, were you present for the birth of your child? I son? was present before, during, well after. Um, <laughs> Did you it, almost pass out? <laughs> no. Hey. It was weird. Awesome. I was very, I was under the impression that, you know, what when she was pregnant, and oh, I feel like such a dick for saying this, <laughs> I know there's guys that just can't stop touching the belly. The belly. The, oh, I, I didn't want to touch it. Really? <laughs> Yo, we had a, we had, we had a. He wants to rub yeah, his belly. we had an episode. I think it was <laughs> Single Mothers Seventeen last season, um, season two. Okay. And I said I want to see her gain weight. I want to see the the belly. I want to touch it, rub it. I want to go through that. I want to experience that. And it's funny because he's why was <laughs> the that opposite. You did, I know. Why? What, what made it? I, you not want to? I. I don't know what it was. It had nothing to do with her. She was still as beautiful as always, even more so. Mm-hmm. It's just... It was like an alien there, in there no, moving around. No, it That's was more I like... It was more like... You didn't want to hurt him. Uh, like, like, like a Fabergé egg. Mm. Oh. Like, you don't touch ooh. it. <laughs> yeah, you're like... Mm. You just watch it. You know, she took one step on... I remember one day... I, uh, we were, we were still setting up for the baby's room Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and she had asked me to go upstairs and get my toolbox, which, you know, came back. And when I walked into the room, my heart dropped because she was standing on a two step step stool. I was like, what are you doing? And she's like, what am I hanging this? I was like, get down. What are you Mm -hmm. nuts? You're going to break the egg. Yeah. I was, oh, I was, I was that (laughs) dad. I didn't want to touch her per se like that. But I was massaging her neck. Mm-hmm. I was petting her hair. No, so you I was holding her hand. I was massaging her feet. When That's it came to the important. actual child, I didn't have a desire to, you know, just like, rub oh. the belly. And she she kept on pushing. She was like, "Oh, look, it's kicking." And I was like, "I guess." Like, <laughs> like, <laughs> um, okay. Yeah, I was like, eh. like you know. But um, what ended up happening with me? Oh, that's so embarrassing. Did I not take you, son of a? <laughs> Stop you know what? These, these new guests that was her. <laughs> that was her. You should have answered. She knew, she knew I was talking about her. Um, <laughs> That's amazing. You know what they say? You develop that that um, that um really soulful connection, mind to mind. She knew. She, yeah. she knew. She was like, you better stop talking about me. <laughs> We've always had a connection. birthed a child. We've always had a connection. Now, was your son vaginal or C-section? Uh, vaginal. Vaginal. Um, oh, and you didn't pass out. I'm impressed. No, it, it was strange because people and I spoke to um, my boss, friend, family, Anthony. Mm-hmm. He has three beautiful children. He's one of the strongest men I know yeah. and one of the best fathers I've yeah, ever shout known. Shout out to Anthony, man. Yeah, and Anthony, Anthony Hunter, Hunter yeah. owner, operator, mm-hmm. murdering three and First Avenue. Mm-hmm. Um, I had to ask him for advice. And I said, I think I have a problem. He says, what? I said, I know this is supposed to be some sort of like father love excitement. I, I, I don't feel it. Mm. He goes, what? And I was like, I... were you nervous? No, nothing. I nothing. felt nothing. And I was worried. And he mm. goes, wait till you see him being born and hold him for the first time. That's going to change. Mm-hmm. I held him. Still nothing. <gasps> really? It was. And I was a little upset with myself because I wasn't sad. I wasn't nervous. I was just 
Yeah. I don't know. Maybe it's you were just in another shock. thing. Maybe you were in shock. It was just like, oh, it's just another day. Like, hey, I'm a dad now. That's cool. Uh, <laughs> fast forward <laughs> about a month and a half, two months, where we had the baby in a bassinet next to the bed. And every four hours, the baby gets up and cries. But I didn't want her to wake up. I mm. wanted her to sleep and get rest. So I took the baby into another room in the living room. And I held him and I was feeding him. And uh, it's like three in the morning. I'm, uh, I'm all like, mm. <laughs> here you go. Like, and he cooed. And oh, I, as I, was, I turned on the TV and, he, and I feel his little hand kind of like playing with my chin hairs. And I looked down, and he's got these big, beautiful brown eyes looking up at me. And he's got my eye long, eye, long eyelashes. And he's <laughs> cooing and looking up at me with this, like, this wonder. That's when I felt it. Really? I started tearing up oh. immediately. It was like, I'm your dad. Like, like <laughs> I it, love it, was, you. it was that connection. And it was so weird. From that point on, the whole world was just different. It was just different. You know? That's um, amazing. How has it like changed you? I know you said um, it changed you for the best, and you um, obviously your your views on life and stuff have changed. Right. What what before your son did you do that was a little reckless? That now everything. <laughs> so wait, did you stop being <laughs> reckless altogether, oh, or oh, there's still some recklessness I, there? No, I'm saying I second guess everything. I mean, really? Uh, yeah. Yeah, because we 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 no sorry to cut you off. We no. had pri- we've had um previous conversations in like private, private. about children. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So the way you are now, it's like it's surprising to me even. <laughs> really, to see. that is so interesting. <laughs> because you know, it, it what, what ends up happening is you when, when you reach that level of acceptance that you are now responsible for another life. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. This isn't a part time job. Mm -hmm. You are dad. You are mom. Mm Twenty four seven. To have that acceptance and knowing that this child is going to be molded into, uh, God willing, someone good, but Mm -hmm. the first, um, like father, the first figure of a man that Mm -hmm. he will know is his father. Mm -hmm. It makes me feel guilty. About do. how I used to be. Mm. That's how much of an effect it has. Stuff that I said, stuff that I did, stuff that I thought three, four, five, six, seven years ago. I'm like, I was an idiot. Like, oh, like what? Like, I don't deserve a child. <laughs> like, and, and 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 from this point on, it almost makes me want to like almost redeem myself. It almost makes me want to like be better. Call up people and be like, hey, listen, remember that time I said I was an asshole? Like, <laughs> I'm so sorry. Yeah, like it makes me wish, like, oh, I should have never done that. Like, what an idiot. Um, so I, I also know, besides you know being a tattooist, mm-hmm. you have tattooist. many accolades. Yeah. Many you wear many different hats. You you <laughs> also I don't know, them. I know a, a, a big um, another big. Uh, not desire, but something that you're working on is a, a comic book, right? Series. Yeah. Yes. Why don't you tell us about that? Um. Well, uh, a, lo- a lot of people don't know this. Some people do. Some people don't. Um. But uh, tattooing was never a thing that I wanted to do. Huh. Uh. Now it's commonplace. I think a lot of people who are younger would agree with me that uh, there's a lot of kids in high school that aspire to actually be tattoo artists. Mm -hmm. Oh, when I graduated high school, I want to be a tattoo artist. I graduated in 99. Nobody said that they wanted to graduate high school and be a tattoo artist. The people who got tattoos were criminals, bikers, prostitutes, crazy people, scumbags. Like Those are the people that got tattoos. No one wanted to be a tattoo artist. Um, Back in the day. Yeah, like any misconceptions too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm I'm very happy that the industry has changed. Mm -hmm. Uh, I, I wanted to be a writer. I wanted to be a journalist. Mm. I wanted to uh, just write. Mm. Um, I wanted to be a film critic. Uh, anything writing was was very. I um, was very into it. And uh, when I came to the states from Puerto Rico, I didn't really know how to speak English very well. Are you were born in Puerto Rico? I was actually born in Far Rockaway, but two months later they we moved, to, moved Puerto- to Puerto Rico. How long did you live there? For? I was there till I was about six. So oh. when I came to the states from Puerto Rico, you know, I was like, what? Okay. <laughs> Yeah, like, <laughs> and um, so reading was very difficult for me. Hmm. Um, 
comic books was really what introduced me to reading. And it got me very interested in other things. Like, for example, Shakespeare. Mm -hmm. Everyone is like, oh, you know, Shakespeare. Well, that's not comic books. You know, that's, you know. Right, that's a classic. Yeah. Right. But it was a couple of characters within the comic book that was talking about Shakespeare mm. that oh, awesome. made me wonder, well, who the hell is Shakespeare? Mm -hmm. Mm. And, you know, people quoted, um, you know, Shakespeare, like Hamlet and Macbeth mm -hmm. and The Taming mm -hmm. of the Shrew. I learned mm -hmm. about those stories from comic books mm -hmm. and that led me to pursue those stories to see what they were talking about. Mm -hmm. So in essence, I'm going to tell parents right now, if your kids read comic books, let them read comic books. Mm -hmm. Comic books are so intelligent. They're so, you know, comic books teaches people about acceptance, mm -hmm. you know, about so many beautiful things. And um, that is my introduction to art. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't drawing, it was reading. It's, so, like, a, it's like another form of expression. It really is. It's it, To me personally, it, well, it's one of the best forms of expression. Writing is artistry. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I so you are an artist. Yeah. Uh, mm. <laughs> If you can write, listen, a lot of people can't draw, they can't write, you know, right. they they survive on basics. If you can write, that's a that's a form of art that you're putting down, you know, meaningful things. Now, I would agree with him. listen, going back listen, to man, mm -hmm. don't be modest, okay? <laughs> you're great We're at what you, you do. <laughs> listen, listen, I I go through this issue myself. When you're in it, doing it, you 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 you're like, okay. This, this, that. You feel like, oh, this is easy or whatever it is. You're modest, you're humble. Right. People on the outside, like me, I'm looking at you like you're not good, you're not great, you're phenomenal. <laughs> you look at it like, oh, I still okay. need to do more work. And I feel the same way. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I don't want to talk about myself on this show. Like, I want you to run the show. No, no. But no. you know what I'm saying? Like, I feel that way. Because, like, when you're, when you're on the inside looking out, you don't realize that. But people on the outside looking in, they're like, yo, mm -hmm. this shit is incredible. Mm -hmm. right. it's, it's hard for me to accept that sometimes. Yeah. It really is. But now, going back to the comic books, do you draw it or do you write the, the words for it? Or do you no, do all of it? I, I just write. I'm actually still looking for someone who has that comic book illustrative training. Mm. Because not everyone yeah, can no. be... Like me personally, I've never had any art training Ever. Mm -hmm. So even on my own social media, it doesn't even say tattoo artist, it says tattooist. Mm -hmm. Because I don't believe that I deserve that title. That title is shared by people who um, actually draw, who actually paint, who actually sculpt, and mm -hmm. don't get paid for it. You give me a piece of paper and a pencil and want me to draw something, if I'm not getting paid, I won't do it. Right. So I don't I don't have that passion for art. Other people do. God bless no, them. No, 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 no. I'm gonna I'm I am going to correct you. You don't have the passion for drawing. You have the passion to write, which is again oh. an art form. Okay, I, I can. You see can't that. argue with me because uh, <laughs> I like to go. I like to go toe to toe. You can. You can ask Mister Yield this one over there because you know. Okay, and that I will agree. Listen, artist, but tattoo if, artist. Okay. Eh. If we're okay. keeping score, you're losing. <laughs> I'm, but I'm not. I'm now. not keeping score. I'm just saying I like to argue. <laughs> I like to give it she back. Was like, this is the debate. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, no, you're absolutely right. Um, I do have a passion for for. Um, I actually have a passion for just doing a good job. If there's anything, regardless of what it is, um, and wanna, if I was to give advice. anyone advice, whatever you do, bring your passion with you. And that's the thing I love about you. Uh, it could be you something minor. Mm -hmm. that's the thing I love about you. It's not just the hustler. It's not just the hard work. It's the addition of the passion. You know what I'm saying? That's something you can't learn in school. That's something you can't teach. You know what I'm saying? You can't teach heart art. You, I mean, you can't teach heart to have heart. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And, 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 and you know, really give, put your give all, you, put your all in, and put mm -hmm. that passion in. I learned very young. I'm sorry to cut you off, but mm -hmm. this is, I learned very young from my grandfather and uh, from a couple of other people as well that, laziness mm. um it, it, it it's a habit mm -hmm. it, it does it's like an what, epidemic yeah once you start <laughs> comfortability yeah once That's you start like okay well you know what i'm just gonna be lazy on this day mm. now all of a sudden three weeks later you're it's like, contagious yeah mm -hmm. laziness becomes a habit mm -hmm. and I, I i don't want to um have that habit Mm -hmm. I don't like being lazy. Whatever you do, be the best at it. Mm -hmm. If you can do, if someone does it in 20 minutes, try to match that. 
Mm-hmm. Oh, you did it in 18 minutes. Okay, well, now next week, try to do it in 15. Mm-hmm. And then sit back and relax and see how anybody else can beat 15. And if they mm-hmm. do, you're setting mm-hmm. the gold standard, mm-hmm. not because you're showing off, not because you want to flaunt that you're better than everybody, mm-hmm. but because that's your own personal, personal speed, speed. That's mm-hmm. your own personal preference. That's your, this is where I'm comfortable. Mm-hmm. You don't want to be... You want to go as fast as I do? That's fine. I'm not speeding. Mm. This is my pace. Right. Mm. You really want to see me, you know, speed? Wow. Then I'll do it at ten, mm. and then you know, I'll probably, you know, fall asleep crying <laughs> because I'm overworking myself. So I know that you're um, you're also like a comedian. Like I said, you wear many different ends. Well, I stole your mm. yeah. Because you know, I was coming with them, and I was like, I'm gonna get this one in too. You yeah. know what it is? I you 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 your your brain waves are red, and I'm I just stole you. it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so let me give him one as a, as a side hustle, as as a as this more of a hobby. Uh, I, I enjoy I'm so- making people smile. Yeah, I'm sorry to cut you. I I saw it on YouTube, like your YouTube channel. <laughs> yeah, like I was there for the up. whole thing. Yeah, because I couldn't make it. That at the time, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? I had so much shit going on to actually sure. be there physically. But man. I was showing my love like on the YouTube. I'm like, you know what I mean? Because I'm always supporting you, nah, whatever man, it is. Man, man. Big, small, what whatever. Is- and I was on that YouTube page and I'm just like, this motherfucker's just fucking funny. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know you don't notice that he's funny. But when he gets in his mood, like in some people element. get in their zone. Mm-hmm. Whatever you gotta do to get in your zone. Like I said, I don't wanna be microphone dominant. No, um, right. Whatever you do to get in your zone, whatever he does, it works. Because when he is fucking gets in his zone, it's it, the switch is on. So wait, let me ask you what you do what do your YouTube channel, which right. we're gonna put out there, um, what is it what is the content of it? Just you like doing stand up or like a, an array of different things? It's actually two different things. It's oh. uh my stand up, which is my hobby. Um okay. and then there's uh my three D work. Which is, um, I am one of four people in the world that does a specific type of tattooing, uh, where I call it interchanging imagery with the use of 3D glasses. Uh, um, so my YouTube channel actually has cool. all of my videos of this particular style of tattoo, and then I throw in like. You Would know, you like to demonstrate <laughs> today how you do that? <laughs> just kidding. I'm just kidding. Um. So yeah, that's you know I just started the YouTube channel. I'm old. I'm like, How old are you? I'm 39. You shut your mouth. Somebody <laughs> should get slapped right <laughs> now. Grace, you know, like, Please, let's not play the who's older game. Please. I just for one, I don't want to win it, but I am. So <laughs> like, let's I'm just, win. just I'm it, winning. Do you um practice your your you know your comedic routine with your son? No. While you're feeding it? <laughs> no. But what I do is I take mental notes and then when I see like certain situations, it's actually very simple. Is what it I hard? do is I tell I stories. When you tell somebody like, oh, oh yeah, I, you know, I do stand up comedy sometimes, I'm like, yeah, say something funny. I know it's <laughs> And then I I'll say, now. and then I'll say something funny. Because that's the best that I can come up with. Mm. Like, <laughs> that's too much pressure. Man. Yeah, I don't say it's, something uh, funny. Yeah, I just say something funny. Um, no, I tell stories. Does your girlfriend think you're funny? No, um, no, really? she does. Uh, she thinks I'm hilarious. Think. That thinks that is a funny. thing that you do. You tell stories. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's what I do. I'll, I'll look at a story and I'll look at a situation, and then I'll just I'm kind of roasting it. Mm. You know, I'm making fun of it. I'm bringing up to light things that people don't necessarily like mm-hmm. think about or talk about. And I'm like, ah. Huh, Look at that. And, and then people are like, oh, yeah, that's true. Did, mm. did you find it to come like naturally for you? Yes. Oh, that's good. Yeah, that I will say that. Um, and it's, it's fairly simple for me. What I'll do is uh, I'll just live my life. I'll live my day. If I see something funny or if I think of something funny, I'll pull up my phone and I'll write down like a little note oh, in, in, in my cell phone because thoughts are fleeting. They go yeah. in, they go yeah. out and, uh, you know. A week later, two weeks later, I'm thinking to myself, what did I say in the shower that yeah. time? That was really fucking funny. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wait, I wrote it down on my cell phone. And then I'll take it and then I'll clean it up. Mm. And then I'll make it shorter. And then I'll cut out this part. And then I'll add in this part. You know, because that to me, so cool. comedy is like, think of a wave. Mm. You feel the crowd. You, you build up, you build up, you build up the joke. You hit them with the punchline, and then you shut up. Mm. And then you uh. wait for them to laugh. And mm. feel the laugh subsiding. That's when you start talking about the next joke, mm. and then you hit them again, mm. and it's, it just goes up and down. If you find that sweet spot, your little ten-minute 
It's good. it's perfection. Have you ever um, thrown up before going on stage? No. Do you get nervous? No. At all? No. It's it's weird. You know who said it best? It was Mike Tyson who said it best. Um, he said it in an interview, and I felt like him with anything that I do. When he said this in this interview, I was like, wow, he put my feeling and he put it to words. He said, when I get closer to a fight, I'm terrified. Mm. He said, but as the days progress, I get less scared mm. and less scared all the way to the point where I'm about to walk into the ring no, and I'm empty. gaining more confidence and confidence. And by the time I walk into the ring, no one can beat me. I'm unbeatable. But when I'm, same thing happens to me. Interesting. Before uh, uh, a stand-up, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm scared. Even before I do a tattoo, which I know is going to come out great, mm -hmm. I'm scared. I'm like, mm. oh man, do, do, can I do this? Can I do this? But but you know, I train myself, I train my body, I train my mind, and as the days progress, I become more and more confident in what I'm about to do until when it's go time that I'm like, let's do this. Mm. And um, it's it's a very odd um thing to say mm. when you tell people. Oh, can you handle this? Like, you know, this tattoo? Like, I'm like, oh yeah, sure. But in my mind, I'm like, oh, <laughs> like I don't, maybe I don't know. <laughs> how how many um stand up shows have you done? Or, or... I've only done five. So only far. that's really? amazing. Five is a big accomplishment. There One is, is a big accomplishment. There I could are never some do that. phenomenal comedians out there that are not even known. Um, yeah. I you know they're on my Instagram. They're wonderful people. Um, they do it every other night. Mm. every other weekend mm. bomb or succeed they're there i mean i i'll be honest with you there were out of the five i did have one night that i bombed really and oh man just nobody laughed well no way. I, listen <laughs> listen listen I'm gonna cut you, fault, hold up though. i'm gonna cut you off right there because the <laughs> irony right. about the irony about success is failure yes, yes. you know what i'm saying like you gotta fail big before you can make it big. Right. Like I remember Denzel saying that once. You know what I'm saying? But it's a fact. You know, and and, and it's, a, it's a learning process. There's pressure. There's a lot of you pressure. Know? Because um, afterwards, after that one night that I bombed, I spent the next three weeks like, oh God, I don't know if I can do this anymore. Like I was about to say mm. that questioning yourself? Like, I'm, yeah. It was, it was, it was, and then all of a sudden I was like, it makes you strong. Fuck it, let me do it again. Yeah, like <laughs> then, people were idiots. You already went through. The, yo, you already went through the worst. What else <laughs> right. could? Yep. What else could happen? It yep. makes you stronger. Exactly, and um, I guess you know, that, it helps you there. develop thick skin. I guess, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. Absolutely. I, I I would say that um, uh, where there's people that have a passion for stand up comedy, where they have a passion for um, you know, tattooing. Um, I would probably say I have a passion for just doing a good job no matter what it is that you yeah. want to do. Mm -hmm. right? Whatever your choice, uh, your, your life decisions take you, whether it's being a janitor, whether it's mm -hmm. working in retail, whether mm -hmm. it's being a lawyer, a doctor, and wherever you are on the spectrum, bring your passion. Be the best at it mm -hmm. because someone's watching mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. no matter what you do, someone cares mm -hmm. yeah. about your job. And you could change somebody's mm -hmm. life too. Yeah. Yeah, man, I applaud you because... To be honest, I could never do that shit. You know what I'm saying? Like oh, I could, the stand up? Yeah, I could never do it. I'm a, I'm a serious person. I'm a like, it <laughs> takes a lot to just get me to laugh and shit like that. Like, I'm can just, you figure him out? Like, she's, she's constantly telling me, you need to smile sometimes. You when we to went to smile. Hollywood, are you going to smile to the executives or that's how you're going to be? Like, you need to smile. Like, you, you're too intimidating. So I could never do it because... It's like you have to have that personality and you have to, you have to, um, like if people aren't accepting you or, or whatnot, like you kind of just have to go with that. Me, yeah, I'm, I might, I do it. If I get booed, I'm be like, fuck this shit. I ain't never he's doing throwing, this shit he's again. He's going to throw the mic at you. I ain't you doing this shit again. Bastard. How dare y'all not laugh at my fucking jokes? Uh, you know what? You are funny, damn it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but, but you know what? Um, when it comes to comedy, there is a science behind it. Um, understand that there are certain types of different comedies that you yourself could like or dislike and you just got to find where it is like uh like you know like uh like music you mm -hmm. know mm -hmm. rap, like your taste rap just isn't just rap mm -hmm. there's, there's so many gangster different. rap mm -hmm. there's trap. pop rap right. there's trap now there's there's so many different types of, well mm -hmm. comedy is right. the same way but let, let me ask you this with everything you know maybe not this year but years past they bring up 
um, whatever a comedian says, you know, that happened back in the days, a long time ago, right. like to shove it in their face, like, oh, you said this word or you said that. How right. do you feel about that in regards to comedians? I think that people need to understand that these are jokes. Okay. These are not I things agree. that I believe. These are things that I believe are fucking hilarious to say mm. you know they're just jokes we're entertaining we're, mm. we're, we're in entertainment mm -hmm. now mind you i can choose not to say certain words Correct. because i myself as a person don't feel comfortable saying these certain words mm. however if another comedian says it i don't judge that comedian right. mm. that's their style right. me personally mm. i'm not a fan of gimmick uh, mm, comedy. Gotcha. Um, again, not saying that they're not funny. Right, mm. right. It's just not your style. The, uh, uh, Jeff Dunham, uh, he mm -hmm, does the whole mm -hmm. you know, puppet. So, not my thing. Mm. Um, mm. That guy, uh, Fluffy. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, uh, Iglesias. And not into him at all. Really? I, <laughs> he's just but again, and not saying that he's not funny. Right, you just, that's not your It's you just know. my type of comedy, my type of comedians that I aspire to, that I you know, really identify with and I love to hear are comedians like Dave Chappelle, where it's oh, very intellectual. Yes. yes. Chris Rock. Yes. Um, uh, Bill Chappelle. Burr. Uh, George Carlin, favorite. who was my all-time favorite comedian. Really? Um, these type of comedians are not necessarily, well, they're not gimmick um, comedians at all, in my personal opinion. They're very intelligent. Yeah. Mm. They can talk They're about... like conscious comedy. They can talk about anything. Mm -hmm. And I've seen... If you've ever seen their stand-ups, they can talk about domestic violence. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They can talk about political affiliations. Mm -hmm. They can talk about racism and somehow... Make it funny. Make it funny. It's terrible. Mm -hmm. Anyone who can do that is a genius to me. These people are just phenomenal. Those are the types of comedians that I identify the most because those are the ones that I aspire to be like. Okay. That the ones that have gimmicks, I'm like, eh. I want to get back to the tattoo real quick. Oh, if sure, you don't sure. have any more comedian stuff, if you don't have any more comedian <laughs> stuff. Well, that was my it's hobby. Not... Oh, yeah. Comedy is my hobby. Yeah. I can talk about that stuff. The only comedy. question I want to say about the, the comedy mm -hmm. part is um, do you think you're going to keep pushing forward with that? Absolutely. Because okay. um, you change mm -hmm. as a person. And every single time you change as a person, who I was in high school is not the same person I was when I graduated. Right. Like mm -hmm. You were a freshman, yeah. just to a senior, just mm -hmm. that you're not the same person. Throughout your college, you're not the same person. Mm -hmm. I'm just 39 now. Mm -hmm. okay. Just five years ago, I mm -hmm. wasn't the same person. Mm -hmm. I am very excited to see what kind of dumb shit I'm going to talk about <laughs> when I'm 50. When I have to go into the hospital and have, you know, grown men put their fingers in my butt. You can have a woman do it, too. I'd rather a man. Uh, because <laughs> that, that is, is be the most interesting answer. I've ever because it's going to be funny. Think about that first. If it's a woman, it's like, okay, well, this is normal. But if it's a man, I have to think about, like, am I going to make any noises? Last it's question. hysterical. So, last me. question. Will you purposefully go to a male doctor just so that you can live that experience? Just so I can have that experience, so I can make a joke you know about this it. This man is all about his craft. Uh, that is I it. applaud you, sir. I <laughs> sacrificed a finger in my butt. You know what I'm saying? Just for you people. You better yeah. go on his damn channel. You better go and support his comedic mm -hmm. stand up routine. Damn, that's what I'm talking So the thing with the tattooing. Yes. Um I, am I know that you have deposits mm. when you set up uh yes, an appointment. Yes. Oh okay. man, I knew so these I questions wanted to ask, were going to come. <laughs> yes. I wanted to ask you Sock to if <laughs> I wanted to ask you if you had someone who would like, okay, they gave their deposit and they were just like a no call, no show. Right. And what did you do? Did you improvise? Woo! Did you did you just be like, okay, I'm closing up shop. I'm I'm leaving for the day. Let, let's say let's say you had like, let's say you had two sure. two two that day. Right. You already did the first person, uh -huh. and the second person just no call no show. But they already left the deposit. I right. know deposits are non uh, refundable. Yes. Okay. So what did you do? Did you um just close shop and it was like, okay, I'm out of here? Oh. Did you? Have man. somebody else come in and Ooh, tattoo. Let me, oh, let me just crack oh, this. Man. Oh man, this is gonna be, <laughs> He's gonna get serious. Ooh, now. This is gonna be a TED talk now. Yeah, man. I want to um, get into the lifestyle questions. Oh man, I hope <laughs> I hope my clients and potential clients hear this. Uh, <laughs> okay, first off, uh, when it comes to deposits, deposits are a way of the shop and the tattoo artist knowing that you, as a client, take your tattoo seriously. Mm -hmm. 
if you are not serious enough to leave a deposit, why am I going to be serious enough to even entertain your tattoo? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It's really that simple. Um, if you leave a deposit and you don't show up, I'm sorry, but I could have given this uh, slot to someone else. I do not get paid hourly. I get paid only on the amount of work that I do. Mm -hmm. So if I go into work, I spent money on gas, I spent money on lunch, I spent money like, you know, just, just being cool. here mm -hmm. and nobody shows up, I mm -hmm. go home broke. So that $50, mm -hmm. even though it's not going to break the bank or anything like that, well, it's going to pay for my lunch. It's going to pay for my, Groceries. you know, like it, it's going to, it's going to be a reason for me to, mm, I lost yep. four hours. All right. Whatever. Courtesy and, um, um, courtesy and uh, consideration. Here's my next question mm -hmm. for you. I know you're a punctual person. I try to be. <laughs> <laughs> you are. He laughed at now, me. Now. Do you so are you terrible. strict on your clients as far as like being punctual? No. Okay. No, not at all. <laughs> what if you have back to back though? Back to back. Oh, I don't care. We it's so bad. <laughs> <laughs> and I know that it's not okay. God damn it. Um, there's so many tattoo artists that are so much better than me when it comes to this. <laughs> My whole thing is that when I when I'm tattooing, it is um I'm creating something with my hands. Mm -hmm. We should not be... Don't get me wrong. If your appointment Hurrying, is at 6 right. and you come in at 8, we're not tattooing. Right. But, but if, you don't want to rush it. It's a... Listen, eat something. Drink something. Mm -hmm. Use the bathroom. Mm -hmm. Relax. How's your family? Mm -hmm. Let's talk a little. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me start setting up stuff. Mm -hmm. It's 10 minutes past. It's all good. You're my only appointment for today. Mm -hmm. You have me sure. until whenever the hell time... Shh. Now let's start because if I'm relaxed, if I'm feeling yeah, good, yeah, your tattoo is going to good. feel. But if I'm being rushed, if mm -hmm. you come in and say, "Hey, I have to be somewhere in thirty minutes," mm -hmm. you're not getting tattooed. Yeah, right. yeah, but I have an appointment. I don't care. Yeah. Thirty minutes. That. Yeah, that's one thing. An about hour? Rob. Like, mm, no. You, yeah. I'm changing something on your yeah. body that's going to be on your body forever. Do yourself a favor. Cancel your plans with your friends at the club. Yeah. I'm changing your body. This is cosmetic surgery to me. Mm. The last thing I want to do is tattoo you and then rush it because you want to make it to Starbucks to meet up with your friends. Right. Mm. They can wait. Right. That's just how I feel. Did you, did you have a lot of uh, clients that, that say that to you? No, no, oh, no. But I, just, but I as, do, as an example. Uh, but I do let my clientele know we, you know, your appointment is for 6.30. Mm -hmm. Expect needle to skin between 6 30 and 7 30 because oh. within that hour it'll give us enough time to eat something get comfortable mm. let's put something on television because i don't yeah. have to rush because he's trying I to build that rapport right that's what i get he wants to build that rapport he built he he vibes off energy right. mm -hmm. i didn't set anybody up for you so you're not being rushed right the last thing i want is i set up something for nine o'clock so now i have to rush you that's not fair to you. yeah that's mm. no fair. i'm here and then we're like well what time do you close I close when the job is done. Mm. So if we started at 7.30 and I'm tattooing until 1 a.m., that's all good. Right. Mm. Because it's all going on you anyway. It's you and me. Right. You're not getting a tattoo. I'm not doing a tattoo. We are doing a tattoo together. Mm. So let's do it. You know, we that's got a job an awesome to way to think, though. You'd be surprised how many people in the tattoo industry don't feel that way. They, it's like money, money, money. You know, get them in, get them out, get them in, get them out. Money, 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 money. And I'm like, eh. Yeah, so, and that's, that's what I see is the difference with you. Yeah, mm, I, I definitely. If you love what you do, money just happens. Mm. So, how old were you when you got your first tattoo? I was sixteen. Mm. I know that's no bueno. <laughs> okay, no, that's fine. I was seventeen. I, I want to ask. First. I wanted to ask you. I know you have a, a newborn. Yes, going to be one soon in February. Yes. When he comes to you and he says, "Dad, I want a tattoo." Absolutely. Can you do it, Dad? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah? Yeah, absolutely. What if he says, nah, I don't want you. No offense. I want somebody else to do my first tattoo. I will Take teach. Ass. By, by the time he gets to that age, I am hoping that he learns by example the same lessons that I try to instill on clients. Which is? I do not mind if we go to someone else. Okay. I, as long as you follow these certain rules. One. Make sure that they have a portfolio. Get your pens ready, people. Yes. <laughs> this is important information. Make sure that whoever you go to has a portfolio readily available, whether it's physical or whether it's online. Okay. Two, make sure their portfolio is up to your standards 
to the tattoo that you want. For mm-hmm. example, if you wanted a portrait, don't go to a tattoo artist that's showing you a Cartoon. portfolio of cartoons. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Make sure that the person that you go to specializes in the in the style of tattoo that you want. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Next, make sure that they're reasonably priced. I'm not saying, you know, if the guy is charging you four grand, that that's expensive because there are people that charge four thousand right. dollars if the work is four thousand dollars worth i mean it's beautiful it's amazing there's nobody else this guy's got or this girl has awards has magazines Mm -hmm. yeah you're paying for Mm -hmm, what is going to be an amazing tattoo however if the guy if the tattooist is uh charging four grand for something this small that you know anybody could do for you know a quarter of that Mm -hmm. well that guy's just trying to rob you Mm -hmm. you know and uh you know that's my thing so as long as my son is here to those that if you find an artist that has a good clientele, reasonably priced, strong portfolio. That is go, okay. Get tattooed by this person. Good you for know, you. Um, don't get tattooed by your friend's cousin in a kitchen. It's it's not. The is same. that is that you, where you got yours? No, <laughs> <laughs> I made sure it was in a shop. All right, uh, but you know we kind of lied about my age. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, well. like, yeah, fuck it. He's eighteen. That's him. Like, can <laughs> can can that happen now? Can somebody lie about their age now to you guys? They can and they have. Um, we are fortunate enough that we are a very serious shop, but we do uh, adhere to the rules and regulations of New York State and Suffolk County. Mm. Uh, if you are under 18, no one can sign for you. Mm. You must be 18. New York State law says that, and they are very clear about that. Uh, parental consent cannot be given to a minor for a tattoo, only piercings. New I was Jersey, about to say that. New Jersey what different. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you can Jersey. be 15, 16 years old. Yeah. As long as there's a parent signing yep. for you, you can get that too. But I am licensed under New York. 17, sorry, I'm not going to tattoo you. Mm. Even if it's your own son? <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I mean... If, <laughs> sorry, I think there's something wrong with the I, mic. I, <laughs> if it's my own son, I might... <laughs> no, gotcha, gotcha. I totally understood it. Okay. So what are your... um? What are your goals? There's benefits to having a tattoo done. <laughs> what are your goals? Like, do you want to have your own shop one day? Multiple shops? Um, do you con- do you still see yourself doing this? Like when you're sixty, um, seven Along years with, old, with the like com- comedy, the comedy <laughs> thing, get you know? the comic books. Um, what is the order I'll be of how you, you want to do? I'll, I'll be very honest with you. I do not want to be tattooing at fifty, sixty years old. Okay. Um. I, again, I don't have a passion for tattooing. I have a passion for doing a good job. Mm-hmm. But for me, I I, I want to get to that age where I'm tattooing because I want to, mm-hmm. not because I have to. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's just my own personal preference. Mm-hmm. So where 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 does your passion lie in besides doing a good job in whatever it is that you're doing? Being happy and making other people happy. So, that is where I want to be in ten. 20, 30 years. Okay. I want to be that person who could be considered a, um, a philanthropist, mm-hmm. uh, a person who uh, spends their time uh, helping the needy, um, just mm-hmm. helping people who are less fortunate. I, I, I like the idea of giving. Yeah, because what ends up happening is um, I think right now in 2020, a lot of people are affected by their self-confidence. A lot of people are very insecure about themselves. A lot of people are more concerned about how they feel about stuff as opposed to what's really important. Mm. Mm. I was lucky to be raised in a way that being good was more important than being happy. And that's a very strange concept. Mm. However, if you think about it this way, my self-confidence goes up and my happiness goes up when I know that I'm doing good for someone else. Mm. Gotcha. So for me, being you know good is more important than being happy because if I'm being good, then I'm already being happy already. because it's making me happy. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's a weird way of thinking that's uncommon right now. Mm. But that's where I want to be in like 20 years. Okay. It's not really weird. No. That, well, you know what I'm saying? Someone on the outside looking and I could get it, but... I don't think it's weird. Yeah, but well, that's what I mean. If you if you ask you know a child or a young person you know what do you think your parents would want you to be mm-hmm. you know, successful, happy, um, you know, or good, you you'd be surprised. Yeah. They're gonna a lot of parents will have kids tell them, well, I I uh, 
my parents will want me to be successful. My parents will want me to be happy. Not many people are going to say my parents want me to be good. Mm. Yeah. Well, I was. I, mm. I, I grew up and I was like, well, I just want to be good. I just want to be a good person. That's all. Remind me of uh, Thomas Jefferson. Life, liberty, pursuit of happiness. Mm-hmm. Huh? Mm. Yeah. So, um, as far as the comic book thing, I know you're you're the you would be the writer yes. for it, and you're, um, which is weird because well, not weird because you said that your passion does not lie in <laughs> art in drawing, right? So, um, when you find that, do you already have like a story already yes. created? Oh, I, so I, you're I, just basically waiting for an artist to come and that correct. that you can mesh well with. Yes, there's mm-hmm. a couple of stories actually that I'm um very uh, like my heart's in it. Um, I'm I'm already invested in it. One of them is more of a uh, a horror, uh, suspense thriller single story. That's which awesome. That could or could not be a comic. Um, actually, I think Discipline and I actually spoke about it. One day we're gonna sit down. I'm gonna give him a rough copy. I'm like, here, mm-hmm. check this out. Um, he, hopefully, because uh, I'm very proud. I'm of trying him. to collaborate. We've known each other for so many years, and I'm very, very proud of him. Yeah, he He's another a, one with big a, accomplishments. Published. Too. You know, like I said, writer. we're not here to talk about me. I'm just Am saying, I the only odd man out here? <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying I'm just proud that you are a published writer, and it would be an honor to actually write something together with you. And, uh, I would definitely listen. I would definitely, definitely. put my uh, investment in my stock in that. <laughs> the other story that I have is more of a comic book where I've specifically wrote it in a way that you know it's episode based. So I've had, if you were to say, it in this uh, way, six episodes written. Oh, okay. That one I'm looking for an established uh, comic book illustrator. Now let me ask you because I'm not a, a comic book type of person mm. when you say episodes is that you know one comic book and then you have to go with number episode two? or issue oh okay so whichever you know if it was if it was made into a cartoon an episode if it was made into a comic book uh issue comic book, yeah gotcha. but i've written it in a way that i want whoever the last thing i want is to trap an artist in a box where they have to do what they're what they're reading mm-hmm. i've written it in a way that any artist to look at it can have their own like interpretation of it and that's then amazing kind of have a creative freedom list of like where this artist how he you know, sees it he or she can come to me and say hey how tall is this person well huh. how tall do you think they are because i never wrote their height right mm. how do you see this person in your head draw right, it draw out? Like that. and that's then whatever awesome. they drew out i'm pretty confident be like that's, that's, that's how it looks like right. done. So I want them to have that creative freedom to be like, hey, can I also add this because it'll do this? Excellent. Go ahead. Do it. I want the artist to have like a co-creator vibe to what I've written. Huh. You know, I set up the vegetables. I set up the sauce. I set up the dessert. Throw in the meat. You right. know, I'll leave you. you know, let's, let, let's make a meal out of this. Gotcha. That's how I've written this. And yeah. uh, I just haven't found that person. Yet. Interesting. That's very interesting. I might have a part of for you. Oh. Let me get you. Give me the number. I got you. I got you. We're all about making so, connections on uh, the Discipline Therapy yeah, Podcast. No, tattooing is um, it's fun. I love it. I love the people. I love the interactions with people. Um, the, uh, the awards that I've won, the magazines that I've been published in, uh, the sponsorships that I've been blessed to uh, acquire throughout the years. So um, are you still going to be doing like the... the um, uh, the conventions and stuff like that because I, I haven't gone in like years. I think I'm done competing at the conventions. I mm. think I'm done just going to the conventions. I've accumulated, uh, uh, blessed to have been accumulated um, 55 awards in different tattoo competitions. Wow, awesome. All Shift Rob does is, sorry to cut you off, all Rob does is win, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> if all you see these win. these uh, uh, trophies behind us, win. all he does is win. I've never seen this guy place in like fourth or something like that he's always like top, <laughs> top three top two top three yeah you know what i'm saying like it's it's uh i've, I've been fortunate enough to have a good uh run run exactly very good yeah run let me ask you though with the with covid and all that stuff do you think that that's even that that's going to change those conventions and stuff like that i would imagine so you know right now we're it's probably going to be all digital now right i'm, I'm so who knows we're living yeah. in such a strange right? time right now where, uncertain yeah. you know life is changed going to be different yeah we don't know when this pandemic is going to end mm. 
I did my own research, and it turns out that the last pandemic that hit lasted two, I two think years. almost three years, something yeah. like that. So yeah, it's help. not unreasonable to say that this pandemic might go well, well into no, 2021. Yeah. No, yeah. Easily. Um, so we should really knuckle down, mm-hmm. try to work on being good, mm-hmm. uh, work on being good to each other, um, you know, and then, uh, you know, let's, let's survive this together. Yep. Let's, mm-hmm. you know, listen to the rules. COVID is a real thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, yes, people are dying. Mm-hmm. People are getting hurt. People are getting sick. It's, it's not some sort of conspiracy. Let's be honest here, guys. If, mm. if, if you are a family that have had someone, um, you know, that you've lost Got someone. affected by it. You can't tell them that this is a conspiracy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. To them, it's a real thing that happened. Yep. And it's, it's heartbreaking. It's, it's heartbreaking. No, I, I agree. Um, so your pot, not your podcast. We have the podcast. You your, guys have the podcast. What am I talking about? <laughs> your, um, YouTube channel. Yes. Where can people reach it? Like, what is it? What is, what is the name of it? It's just Robert Rodriguez, 3D tattoos. You know, once you type that in, you will be able to see it right away. I, I just started doing the YouTube thing. I don't even know if I even have like a rant. Like, just type in Rob Rodriguez. Around? <laughs> I, I totally, I understand that language. <laughs> what is your uh, your social media? Mm-hmm. Your, um... My social media is Rob Murda Inc. Uh, R-O-B-M-U-R-D-A-I-N-K. Uh, named after, actually, my teacher and mentor, Nike. Mm-hmm. Uh, co-founder of Shirt Kings. They were doing all the uh, um, the uh, graffiti and mm-hmm. the, the, uh, the the denim jackets yep. and everything. The, the Coliseum. That was so big, yeah. Yes, him, Kashim, and... Uh, I, I always forget the third guy. God bless him. I love him. But I, I met him a couple of times. He's awesome, but I don't remember him. But they started it, and then uh, Nike started Murder, Inc. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I started... That's actually how I started tattooing. I didn't want to. Mm-hmm. I started working as a piercer for Nike um, back in 2005 okay. at Murder, Inc. 2. He and I got along very well, and uh, he um, said to me, I think you should pick up the gun. And I was like, ah, I really don't want to. Because to me, yeah, if I do a piercing, if I mess it up, you can take it out. Mm. If I do a tattoo and I mess it up, yeah, uh, I don't want that responsibility. Mm. Um, he kept but pushing me. I didn't want to do it. You're amazing at cover-ups, man. Well, he, he kept pushing it and kept pushing it. I didn't want to do it. And then one day I was like, ah, so circumstances happened at, with life. Mm-hmm. that I was like, you know what? I'm being given an opportunity. Mm-hmm. Uh, let me at least try it. And, and now um, look at you. Tattoo extraordinary. I had an apprenticeship with him for two years. I uh, transferred over to Murder, Inc. in West Bab, um, owned and ran by uh, Anthony Hunter, another protege of his. Mm-hmm. Um, and now we're 10 years later, and I'm at his new shop, well, Anthony's, nice. Anthony yeah. Hunter's new shop, First Avenue. And I'm very happy here. We've been I here slipped, for two years. I slid mm-hmm. First Avenue, Long Island. No, uh, in the two years that we've been here, we've already been published in four magazines. We've won wow. six awards. Uh, we've even broke a local record of most tattoos done by a single artist in an eight-hour period. We did 177 tattoos wow. in eight hours. Mm. Um, we Your were hands published. must have been cramped. Oh, I was feeling it for days. I was like, why did we do this? This is mm. stupid. <laughs> um, but we were published in a magazine. I, I had a great crew. Um Kelsey and Natalie, and we had a young girl, Alina. Even my own girlfriend, uh, Dana, was in. Uh, my best friend, Christine, you know, shout out. Uh, mm-hmm. My other friend, uh, Jacqueline, shout out to all of you for helping. It was a wonderful day. That's awesome. I, I, it, was, it was, I couldn't have been more proud. So uh, where can that. people see, like, your work? Like how you said you want your son to be able to see somebody's portfolio. Where Instagram can- is the best. And what is uh, for me, which is Rob Murda Inc. Mm-hmm. Um, I also have a TikTok under the same name. Uh, Facebook is Rob Rodriguez. But in Instagram, you'll be able to see my latest work. You'll be able to contact us, uh, uh, my sponsors. You'll be able to contact the other artists that work in the shop. Okay. Um, we, we we adhere to a, a basic um, motto. Good work for good people at good prices. I like that That's model. That's how we work. Uh, we, none of us are trying to buy Lamborghinis. None of us are trying to, you know, uh, get into your pockets or you know, overcharge you. But at the same time, too, when you come in here, you will be getting, to the best of our ability, mm-hmm. award-winning magazine published work. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. That's phenomenal. Thank you. All right. So that's it for the show. That's, that's it? it? You have anything I'm else gonna, you want to oh, say? Man. I could go on oh, for days. I'm going to miss you. You want to tattoo me? <laughs> I'm going to miss you all. You did tattoo me. <laughs> I did tattoo you. You did. Look. That is. 
Oh, wait, I remember that. With my daughter. I she has mine. That. You did the fish for her. Oh, Isn't it beauteous? I, you know what? I'm going to say it right now. The next time we do this, because I actually really enjoy doing this, the next time we Wasn't do this, it fun? We should have like a questionnaire. You know what? Okay. I'm gonna, can I say that? Yeah. Can I say that? Yeah. I think what you should guys should do in the comments below, <laughs> you should write down questions that you think I would answer as a tattoo artist. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about like what or are a the, comedian? What, yeah. What are the stupidest questions that you've ever? Yeah, I will answer everything and anything. Just ask me any sort of nonsense, mm -hmm. and then the next episode should just be a 50 questionnaire. Like, all right. Sexy Jacob fifty nine says. <laughs> Sexy Jacob, you know what, that's what, weird because the artist that I was talking about, his name is Jacob. That's just weird. That's because I know his you see. No, I've, I've seen man. his Instagram. It's Sexy Jacob. Um, there you go. <laughs> no, it's not Sexy Jacob. I, he maybe he's not sexy. I don't know. Well, maybe it's just a clever he's name. He's pretty sexy. My okay. nephew. So it's not just okay. So it's not one's in the family. It's not just a clever <laughs> name. Man. It's <laughs> spot on. <laughs> Yeah, next time should be just like like a fifty page. My questions weren't good enough. Questioner, no, we should have some silly shit. No, your questions suck. Do you see, honey? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> He's being nice. He's the guest. I am. I am. I have to be. I, I don't have an enemy. You're gonna me. just admit to that you're just being nice. I think I, my questions were pretty. Listen, good. it's bro code. All right. Nah, all right. I don't have it in me. I don't have it in me to be well, mean. I'm sarcastic, I'm, but not mean. I speak that language well too. Right. Well, yeah. we 50, want 50 to. Uh, we want <laughs> to thank you for uh, for being a guest on the Skin Therapy Podcast. We really appreciate you coming on. You know, talking about your experiences, mm -hmm. your goals, um, your passion. I commend you. I you know I respect what you do. I can't do a lot of shit you do, I so I respect that. what you do. Um, you, do you know what I'm saying? Work. Keep doing it, man. Keep pushing. Yeah. Keep pushing. No matter what it is, you're going to get haters. You're going to get people who are going to cancel on you. You're going to get people who are jealous, whatever it is. Just keep doing you. Be like one of those, you know, those horses when they wear the, um, the blinders, the blinders, right? They do that because it keeps them focused on the goal. The moment they look at what's next to them, they're going to slow down. Do you know about horses? Is that what you I, well, my grandmother... She, those um, the, my late, the, the, those horses are typically called Clydesdales. Did you know that? No. Those are the biggest horses. Those are the ones that you ever see the Budweiser commercials. Mm -hmm. with the big, yeah. like, those are Clydesdales. My late grandmother had a, a horse. I'm not intellectual. I only know that because some girl told me. I was like, oh, that's cool. And then I just retained it like a fucking piece of paper shoved into a drawer. Well, they always show them on the <laughs> for the Super Bowl. They uh, always show Budweiser commercials on Super Bowl, and they always have those horses. Mm -hmm. See? Huh, Are you a football see? guy? No. Oh, well, me either. <laughs> well, me either. I just know about the commercials. I don't watch football. I mean, okay, I do watch football if it's Super Bowl. So then you should know those commercials. Yeah, those commercials are... Yeah, but then I think, you know, beer tastes like pee. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So whenever those commercials come up, they're like, the smooth taste of it. I'm no. Like, yeah. Discipline, I've just tasted Discipline it? should say that. It tastes gross. The smooth. <laughs> yes, smooth say taste Budweiser. of Budweiser. I'm not a beer drinker. Say Budweiser. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> say it. Say it. I'm a beer drinker. <laughs> But what I will say is... No, no, wait. Did, did you hear it? Like, I'm not a beer drinker. <laughs> <laughs> I heard it. Soon the, the audio books will be out. Oh, Ladies look at that. Gentlemen. He's putting he's in... He's doing it. He's laying it on thick right now. <laughs> he's still doing it. <laughs> but I am going to I am gonna check to see if you um did subscribe to, our, to the Discipline Therapy Podcast channel. I, because we have a lot of different things coming up. I we did. got new things coming up, people. You got to keep it keep it locked in on oh, this yeah. show because we have... He's been three. subscribed. Ever since I told him that we were going to put it out, he was like yeah. on it. Well, he's the main... He was on it. He controlled it. So I'm, I don't know. I'm just... I just haven't been able... I just wanted to say that we have big things coming up. I'm not it. computer savvy, so I still haven't been able to figure out how to like copy the link and put it on my social media so people can click it. Yeah. So what I do is I do the lazy thing. I just take a screenshot and I post it. Right. I'm like, here you go. <laughs> Look it up. <laughs> no matter what I'm it is, we, we appreciate it. We appreciate, yes, we appreciate the support. You know what I'm saying? Um, Ladies and gentlemen, once again, you were tuned in to... The Discipline Therapy Podcast. I love this part. Peace. I can't go as deep, but I did say it. You got the looks. <laughs> <laughs>